My name is Dr. Jake. I'm a resident physician who treats mental illness, and I take medication for my mental health. And by the way, I'm proud of it. With sweaty palms and trembling hands, I posted this on social media a few months ago. The post was accompanied by a selfie of me wearing scrubs with a pill in my mouth and an explanation of why I posted it. So why on earth would I post that? Well, to begin to answer that question, let's go back 20 years. You see, when I was growing up, I always knew I was going to be a doctor. Like most kids, though, I also wanted to be a professional soccer, hockey, football player, as well as an astronaut, a paleontologist, and a power ranger. But those, those were going to be my side gigs because my main gig was going to be a physician. I didn't come from a family of doctors. In fact, I only knew two doctors growing up, my pediatrician and my, uh, my best friend's dad, who was an OBGYN. But the doctors that I knew and the doctors I saw on TV and in movies, they were superheroes in my mind. Doctors saved lives. Doctors were there for people at their lowest point, their rock bottom. And I wanted to be there for my patients like that. Growing up, I never saw a doctor open up about their mental health. Never. Especially opening up about taking medications for their mental health. Not in movies, not in TV, not in person, never. I believed that by working exceedingly long hours in stressful environments, doctors built up a protective armor that shielded them from any weaknesses or mental health issues. My superheroes didn't experience mental health issues. Doctors just didn't get depressed, and I was going to be a doctor. As I grew up and I entered college, I began to see how difficult following my dream was going to be. The road to becoming a physician is full of obstacles that are set up to weed out the masses so that only the select few can make it through. From organic chemistry to the MCAT exam to the hundreds, maybe thousands of tests that you have to take between college and medical school, it can be grueling, competitive, and exhausting. But I protected my dream at all costs, even at the cost of my own mental health. I remember during my junior year while I was studying for the MCAT in the library, my phone rang. I ignored it. It rang again. Again, I ignored it. A third time, I answered it. My housemate was on the other line. He said, I've got bad news, man. Sean ended his life. Sean was my friend in college. He was in my fraternity, and I had no idea he was struggling. This was the first time that I experienced the repercussions of mental illness and the stigma that prevents people from seeking help and prevents myself and others from recognizing someone who was struggling. I, I coped with this loss the only way I knew how. I kept working, I kept studying, I didn't grieve. As the months progressed and the stress of the MCAT built, I began experiencing insomnia, taking hours to fall asleep and exceedingly high stress levels, but I kept it to myself and I grinded it on because doctors don't get depressed and doctors don't have anxiety and I was going to be a doctor. Fast forward a year or so and things were not looking so hot for me. My MCAT score wasn't great despite putting in hundreds, maybe thousands of hours of studying. I was receiving rejection letter after rejection letter from medical schools and it felt like my dream of becoming a doctor was slipping away. Around this time, I started experiencing more sleep difficulties, as well as chest pain and shallow breathing. I scheduled a doctor's appointment. They did a physical exam on me. They ran blood tests. Everything came back normal. I was relieved, but the symptoms, they continued. I went back to the doctor. He told me something that I will never forget. What you're experiencing is likely anxiety, he said. Your medical workup was normal, your symptoms, the stress that you're under, I believe you are experiencing anxiety. Anxiety? There was no way. I couldn't have anxiety. Doctors don't have anxiety, and I was going to be a doctor. Over the next year or two, I continued on my grind to get into medical school, despite the universe telling me no. I graduated college with a stack of med school rejection letters and a dream that started to feel like a long shot. Nevertheless, I protected that dream. I had, to apply to a medical, I had to apply to medical school again, and that is expensive. I began working odd jobs to earn some money. I worked in a restaurant. I worked in a bar. I drove Uber. 
For the record, waiting tables and driving Uber were some of the most valuable experiences in my entire life, providing me with essential interpersonal skills that are necessary to become a doctor. During this period, I studied for the MCAT a second time, learning from all the mistakes I made the first time. I worked smarter, not harder. Eventually, I moved home with my parents, and I'm so thankful that they allowed me to do that. I worked as an ophthalmology technician, and I gained some healthcare experience. Months later, I got the call that changed my life. Jake, you've been accepted to medical school. You are going to be a doctor. I did it. I was going to be a doctor. I just had to get through four more years and roughly 10,000 hours of studying to learn everything about the human body, all while preparing for multiple nine-hour board exams that determine my specialty and invest $350,000 of money that I didn't have to fund that dream. Piece of cake. There were times in medical school when I felt like I had everything under control, but there were times when things felt chaotic and dark. During my third year, I found my passion for psychiatry. Although I didn't seek professional help for my own mental health, I found myself in a clinic helping others with their mental health, and I loved it. I worked in a methadone clinic. I witnessed people overcoming tremendous odds to find sobriety. When I talked with these patients about their life, when I listened to their stories, I connected with them. This field fulfilled my childhood dream. Psychiatrists help people at their rock bottom. They build people up and they save lives. I also began mentoring pre-meds, offering them advice, insight, and all the lessons that I learned along my journey. I decided to launch a social media page called Destination Med School, where I put all of these insights on Instagram and TikTok to help people across the country. As the account grew, so did my mission. I began creating content with the goal of demystifying medicine and mental health for the masses, creating videos advocating for mental health. Within a year, I would built a following of over 1 million supporters. It became a movement. However, I made sure each post where I discussed mental health had a disclaimer. It said, this post does not reflect my own personal mental health. However, I will always use my platform to fight stigma and provide a voice for those who are struggling. Well, there were times when I was struggling too. I just didn't tell anybody. Because doctors, they don't struggle with mental health. And I was going to be a doctor. A few years later, in July of 2021, I stepped foot in an academic hospital in my dream city of Miami, finally becoming a resident doctor. And I lived happily ever after. The end. Is how I thought it would go, but in reality, things got pretty dark. The first year of residency, it's often called an intern year. It's the most grueling year in medical training. There were long hours. We experienced trauma. I began to feel isolated. At one point, I noticed that I was experiencing anhedonia, which is the inab inability to feel pleasure. Things that you normally like doing, you don't feel any pleasure from any anymore. It's a symptom of depression. I stopped laughing, I stopped smiling. And as I look back on this time, I realized I was just going through the motions. I wasn't truly living. I'm a doctor who treats mental illness and I didn't even realize that I was experiencing one. It took a conversation with a friend at lunch over a meal to finally wake me up. She shared five words that changed my life. She said, Jake, I think you're depressed. But doctors don't get to, no, doctors do get depressed and I'm a doctor, it was time to seek some help. I decided to go to therapy. It felt really good to talk things out. I decided to see a psychiatrist. I started on medication. Every day, things got 1% better. Sure, there were down days, no doubt, but I started smiling more. I noticed the colors of the world again. I can only explain the feeling of recovering from depression like this. Imagine that you're living in a world that's black and white but one day you're handed a pair of glasses with lenses that allow you to see everything in color. It takes time to start noticing things, but day by day, you start seeing the colors of the leaves of the sky and you start seeing the world more clearly, clearly and more bright. Within a few months, I began to feel like myself again. Deciding to get help was one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. And as I began to get better, I thought about posting my experience with depression and seeking treatment in order to help others know that they are not alone. So let's circle back to the sweaty palms and trembling hands I mentioned at the beginning of the talk. 
why was I so hesitant to post this photo and this message? Well, there is a huge stigma associated with doctors seeking mental health treatment, especially when it comes to medication. Basically, I believe there are three main barriers that prevent doctors in training from seeking help. Number one, a fear that our peers or our employers are going to see us differently, view us as weak, or view us as damaged. Number two, there's a culture that begins way before med school that doctors are supposed to be able to perform at the highest level in the most stressful situations with superhuman strength and composure. Number three, this is a big one. There's a fear that we will be unable to receive medical license in states that require doctors to disclose if they've ever received treatment for a mental illness. We are afraid for social, cultural, and legal slash professional reasons. So why did I post it? Trust me, it would have been way easier with way less drama to take a conservative approach about posting about mental health from a distance, never taking a lead role in this movie. But I didn't go down that route. I shared my story to be the doctor that I needed to see when I was young, dreaming about what my life would look like as a physician. I'm not a superhero. I'm a doctor. I'm a human being. And I have struggled with mental health issues. And that's okay. Believe it or not, there are many aspiring medical students and future doctors who now look up to me as my younger self once regarded the doctors that I came into contact with. I wanted to show them the reality of what it takes to become a physician and that the stresses you experience along the way can take a toll on your mental health. I wanted to show them what a real doctor looks like. Courage is not the absence of fear in a stressful situation. It's doing what you believe in, even when you're afraid of the repercussions of the criticism that's going to come your way. It's taking the hard road when the easy path would be so much easier. Real superheroes know when to reach out for help and are not afraid of stigma or discrimination. I hope I showed them that you don't need to be some kind of machine impervious to pain or doubt or weakness to become a doctor. I did it for them. I did it for me. And I did it to move the culture towards a healthier and more compassionate direction. The rest of my post read, the stigma is rampant in the medical field. Opening up about your mental health as a medical professional, especially as a doctor who treats mental illness, can be taboo. As a doctor training to be a psychiatrist, most in the field would have counseled me against making this post. Many would view it as a risk for my career. But I didn't join this field to maintain the status quo. I'm part of a generation of doctors, of nurses, and healthcare professionals that are not afraid to be vulnerable and discuss mental health. I am honored and truly humbled that many consider me a leader in this generation. So here is me leading by example. My name is Dr. Jake. I'm a resident physician who treats mental illness, and I go to therapy, and I take medications for my mental health. And by the way, I'm proud of it. Thank you.